So these were a thing. Back in 2012, LEGO released Constraction Superhero Ultra Build figures. They made Hulk, Iron Man, Captain America, Green Lantern, The Joker, and Batman. They were cool, and also not so cool. Some of them were kind of strange. But they did have some cool pieces, and the builds themselves were actually somewhat interesting. So let's discuss these sets, and more importantly, discuss the interesting pieces that they use. And then maybe how we can use these pieces in our own LEGO creations. Let's dive in. Let's start off with DC and talk about Green Lantern, because I actually think this is a really underrated and awesome set that I really enjoy. The build itself is one of the better CCBS character builds that we got. I think this whole compact torso assembly with these really rad shoulders here look great. And honestly, any time that we can get more bright green colored CCBS armor pieces, that's always a big win. And you actually get a pretty healthy supply in this set, which is pretty good. If you want to buy this as a parts pack, it's kind of worth it. The chest piece does have this Green Lantern symbol on it, and yeah, obviously this is a specific thing from DC, but it can kind of still pass as just some sort of generic symbol, so you can at least get some use out of this printed element in other miscellaneous mocks that have nothing to do with Green Lantern. The Green Lantern face is... Well, it's okay. I think it works very well for what it is. If you want to build a Green Lantern mock or use some sort of face with a green mask, you can do it with this. It gets the job done. But I think the green mask does certainly limit the amount of ways that you could use this in other miscellaneous creations. So it's an okay piece, but for very specific reasons, unfortunately. Some other pieces of note include this trans bright green spike ball and this strange energy piece in the same color. Together, you can use them to create Green Lantern's powers in some fashion. The energy beam is certainly an odd part, but I still think it's cool, it's just really unique and only comes in this set. As in, it hasn't appeared in any other colours either, it's exclusive in every way to this set. It's always fun to find weird, obscure stuff like this. I've not really seen any mocks that use it, but it's a cool piece. You also get these shield with bar handle pieces in white, and these only appear in white in this set, which is also very nice. It's one of those sorts of things where you're like, oh yeah, that's a relatively common CCBS piece. It must appear in white in every set. Nope, only in this one. So I love little weird recolors like that as well. It's good that actually quite a few of these sets come with pieces of a similar nature. But we'll touch upon those very soon. So while the set is good, if we use a few pieces from the set and introduce a few other parts to it, it can be made even better. Much like we see on Ferox's mock here. It's nice that these construction superhero sets can give you printed elements with the superhero logo on the chest or the actual head itself, so that you can have the really important details that you need to actually build that character, and then you can just use whatever other pieces you need to customise the body and the other things to make it look comic accurate or movie accurate. So it's great that these pieces open up a lot of room for creating building opportunities. Now let's start off with the Marvel figures, and we'll begin with a strange one. It's Hulk. Now I love Hulk, he's been a favourite of mine since I was a kid, but this build makes him look a little off. He's got this huge, really huge torso, and he certainly skipped leg day and has the tiniest legs. So the proportions are a little bit off on this one. I also find it funny that the instructions tell you to bend his knees so that he remains the shortest of the Avengers figures when he's naturally very tall, as we can see here in the MCU. But I guess with the legs fully extended, it still does look a little bit goofy. And also he has all this gun metal on his body, which, I don't know, is that like meant to be armor? I mean, maybe it's a callback to Planet Hulk when he wears the gladiator armor or other versions of Hulk in the comics where he has worn armor. But the placement of this is a bit off if it is supposed to be armor. I mean, why is it specifically focused on the midriff and then just the arms in some areas? I wondered what it would look like if you removed the gun metal and replaced it with lime, so I did that and actually I think it looks way better. So it was a strange call to put that on the set, and there's a few strange calls on this set. But I think there's definitely a lot of wins with this set. And also, let's be honest, it's just funny to look at, so most of these strange calls aren't really that bad. It's just a goofy set, and for that, I love it. So some of the wins on this set. Due to the odd torso construction, you actually get a lot of CCBS bone pieces in this set. There's also a decent supply of lime and gunmetal parts in this set, so if you need some of those, it's a good parts pack. And of course you do get this big lime piece for the torso here, and you know, it's not the easiest piece to use since it's so large, but it's still cool and there's definitely uses for it. And speaking of armour, here's Hulk without the armour, and he looks even more goofy. But let's say we want to improve upon this design, or just use the pieces from this set in a mock. 
or we could take a look at Henry Pinto's version of Hulk. It's great to see a bigger version that allows the CCBS head to fit much better with a larger scale. And it's also nice to see all these different system pieces included here to help create a more well-shaped muscular body design for Hulk. It's certainly a lot better than the very gappy design that we see in the set. It really does blow me away how much better this Hulk head looks when it's given a brilliant body design. At first, I don't know, it looks just kind of goofy and a bit cartoonish and off. But now it looks way cooler. And to top it all off, Henry's also made his own version of the Hulkbuster to fight Hulk in this diorama. It's nice to know that if you really want to, you could build a counterpart Hulk, much like Henry has done here, to partner up with the plethora of different Hulkbuster sets that exist out there. But if you want to use these pieces on a smaller scale, you could make Hulk from Planet Hulk in his gladiator armor, as we can see on this mock by Rondo Productions. It's lovely to see that there's some better proportions here because his limbs are a bit bigger, and now this torso piece doesn't just feel way too big. There's some fun armor techniques here, like this brown Rakshi spine piece to create some waist cloth, and then it's great to see how various different CCBS pieces work very well for the armor here. This is a great mock, and I think it's a really nice reminder that the parts from this set can build some pretty epic stuff. Now we go to Iron Man, and this one is actually pretty cool. The face piece is fantastic, the printing on the arc reactor and the rest of the torso overall looks really nice, but why does he have a turret? I mean, surely this should have been on a War Machine figure instead, right? Look, maybe there is some comic book version of Iron Man that has a shoulder turret, but I've never seen one in the plethora of Iron Man comics that I've read. But hey, there's enough comics out there, I'm sure it was in some obscure comic, but even if it was, that's a weird choice to put this on the figure. I imagine it was needed to give Iron Man more of a noticeable weapon so that if kids were playing with it, they could better do so. Maybe? I, I'm not really sure. But hey, it still looks somewhat cool, and this larger gold piece that makes up the bulk of that turret, along with some of these other gold pieces, they only appear in gold in this set. So hey, if we have to get a turret on this set so we can get this cool piece in gold, I'm fine with that. Plus two, Iron Man looks pretty nice without the turret, and it's pretty easy to remove. So if you don't like it, you can just take it off. Now this is one Ultra Build set that we can directly compare to a current system construction version of the same character. So which one's better? I guess that just comes down to personal preference. I mean, they use entirely different types of pieces, so they're very good in their own unique departments. But I think the head mold piece on the CCBS Iron Man just looks a lot nicer. So maybe for that, I think it's a little bit better, but it's a close contest between the two. But hey, both sets are cool. And speaking of things that are cool, IGU has revamped Iron Man using a lot of pieces from the set, but many more parts that aren't in the set. I said how much I love that head design, and when it's given a much larger and more to scale body, it looks even better than before. I love the way that these Ferno leg pieces have been integrated into the leg design on this version of Iron Man. There's something about the energy of those pieces that just seems so fitting for Iron Man armor. The dark red Rakshi heads also work very nice on the torso, kind of filling in this area around the waist. And this is a welcome addition because the original set doesn't really flatter that area that well. But this is a brilliant mock and it's lovely to see what these pieces can do when you really pack them into an awesome creation that IGU has built here. So CCBS Iron Man, he's got some good parts and a lot of good building potential. And now for Captain America. Again, he's got an awesome printed torso piece, and I think there's still nice uses for this outside of Captain America-focused characters and figures. The White Star could work for anything, really. The head is cool, but it's certainly cartoonish and stylized. And yes, some of the other heads were as well, but I think this one, it's a lot more prevalent. And also, this one, once again, has gunmetal pieces everywhere, which I don't fully get why. Once again, removing these and putting some other armor pieces onto the arm, you get a pretty good-looking Captain America, so it's easy enough to remove these if you don't want them here. And it's nice that that's a simple fix to remove them, and then you get some extra gunmetal pieces to play with, so it's pretty good. It's not the end of the world. You do get some of these nice red knee armor pieces. Now these only come in red in this set, and I really like them. It's such a good recolor for this specific piece. You also get this CCBS shield piece with Captain America printed colors and things on the front of it. It's funny, this piece also comes exactly the same, but with a different print on the front in the modern system Captain America set that's only recently been released. And then you can also get this piece as a system dish, and again, the printing is slightly different. So yeah, a bit of a surprise how many times we get this piece in all sorts of different versions. Still, it's a cool piece, but yeah, it might be a bit harder to use outside of Captain America specific creations. Now here's a mock by Sam Betty, and he's built Captain America using purely system pieces. Now I bring this up because I think it's a fair question to ask. Is it better to just build the faces out of system pieces instead of using these stylized heads? 
Which one looks better? Well, Sam has certainly done an incredible job of recreating Captain America's head using Lego bricks, and this whole mock, I think, captures him in an incredible way. And I would say that this mock is probably better than the set, but at least if you buy a set like this, it makes it far easier and more approachable to build a Captain America creation. Because you have the essential pieces, right? You've got the head, the shield, and a printed torso element. That's pretty much all you'd need to build your own version of the character. And I think that's what's so great about all of these different sets. They come with the specific pieces you need to make your own version of them. And hey, if you're someone who struggles to build system brick-built head pieces like this, or just struggles to build with system at all, then this set gives you everything that you need in CCBS form. So it's nice, you know, no matter what your skill level is, no matter what your part selection is, buying these sets and building your own version of the characters is going to be way easier. So it opens up a lot of creative possibilities for everyone, and I really love that. There's something about these that captures the spirit of LEGO, and that's great. I mean, really, all you need to do is buy another set that shares similar colours to these. You know, buy a Furno so you get some more red for Iron Man, then you can customise it a little bit with a few extra pieces, and you could still do a really good, easy job of that. CCBS allows for so much easy customization. So certainly a lot of creative possibilities. And another interesting creative possibility you can get with these sets, when we look at the Batman set specifically, we can see a mock here by Matt Goldberg that uses the Batman head, but they've removed the mask. On Flickr, Matt credits another builder named Follusk, who found that you can unscrew the helmet and remove the mask part of Bruce Wayne's head. Now, this wasn't intended by LEGO, but it can be done. And the leftover face, once the cowl has been removed, when you combine that with Vastus's helmet, it really does look like there's a human face underneath it. So if you don't like these stylized head pieces, there is still room for modification and all sorts of other things when you combine them with other pieces. Oh, and the Joker set is really cool too, especially with all those wonderful purple pieces. I don't have him built, so I can't show you him in too much detail, unfortunately. But both him and Batman, great sets. So all in all, these sets, they're a bit of fun. Even if they're a little goofy and strange sometimes, I still love them. It's certainly a unique chapter in construction history, and I hope that if classic construction does one day return, we see themes like superheroes being put into the mix of construction sets. The parts in these sets are super cool, the builds themselves are pretty nice, and the creative possibilities are endless. So there's a lot of love here. And also, if you want to buy some now, they're surprisingly cheap on Bricklink for somewhat old sets. I expected them to be a lot more, but it's good to know that they're decently affordable. So did you pick up any of these sets? Or you may be planning on buying some now and using the pieces for your own creations. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy building, and bye for now.